So uh, just by way of background, my name is Satyan Sangani. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of a company called Alation. To the extent that you haven't heard of us, I'll describe kind of what we do and kind of what we've been doing for, for the better part of the past six years. So um, the, no the idea here is noise to signal, that, that the noise to signal is sort of really the biggest problem in data. If you think about kind of the advent of big data, you know, um, circa the early part of the 2000, you know, the part, early part of this decade, you know, the, the, the ability to produce data is something that I think we all have and have been able to do, you know, exponentially. But what we, what we don't have is the ability to sort of parse out the insights from that data. And so what we're going to talk about is sort of why some of those trends have, have evolved. So I'm going to give you a brief history um, and obviously a caricature, a model of, of, of the history of data. But I think it should ring true in this audience. So if you think about data kind of prior to the big data era, prior to the self-service era, you know, how many folks in this room, I'll just show a quick raise of hands, how many have, uh, people in this room have either said or have heard that we need a single source of truth inside of our company? Yeah, just one, right? So if you think about that, Classic sale, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Teradata or an Oracle rep. I come into CIO. I say, hey, you know what? You guys need a single source of truth. CFO says, yes, we need a single source of truth. All facts and all information are going to come from this single source of truth. And all we need to do is get all the data in a single place, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to build a data warehouse. We're going to get some ETL to get data into that data warehouse. And we're going to put one reporting layer on that. And all truth will be told, right? And for me, I use this, I look at this and I think, this is kind of like getting news from CBS and Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. There used to be one place we used to go to get information. And that information would be somewhat finite, somewhat slow, because the morning paper would have to come through the person that was delivering it to you, or you'd have to wait for the nightly news to get the information. But you'd get it, and you'd get some key facts about the world around you, right? All of a sudden, then, you know, the internet comes along, right? And then with the internet, you've got, Twitter and TMZ and like tons of blogs, right? And now all of a sudden you don't necessarily know what the difference is between, you know, the core information that you're getting and all of the alternative facts. And inside of the enterprise, you've got another phenomenon that does kind of exactly the same thing, and it's called self-service. You've got whole bunches of tools like Tableau and Click, and you've got data transformation and data preparation tools, and you've got a whole bunch of big data, and you've got stuff inside of S3 and Amazon. And all of a sudden, in addition to all of the stuff on the very left-hand side, you also have a ton of information that's coming at you through the world of user-generated content. Anybody can generate a report. Anybody can generate an insight. There are tons, there are tons of people who can create truth, right? And the problem is that truth is not necessarily curated. And as one of the speakers, I think the gentleman from Morgan Stanley said early in the data-driven enterprise content, not all people know how to apply the rules of science and the rules of data equally. There's a lot of knowledge that you need to use all the data inside of your company. And so people produce multiple truths. And sometimes those truths are accurate relative to the lens that they're creating. Somebody in sales might think that we have a different number of customers than the folks in finance who might think we have a different number of customers from the folks in customer success. But those multiple truths, truths as told creates tons and tons of confusion inside of the company. And so as a consequence today, typically inside of the average global 2000 Fortune 500, you've got a couple of problems. One, you've got way too many tools, right? I, how many people feel like you have few, too few tools? Okay. Um, you've got lots of complicated code that's almost impossible to parse. And you've got too much data inside of too many different systems. And often, there are duplicate data sets. You know, I was just talking to a company yesterday that basically said for one single data set, they had 4,000 different copies that were able to trace across seven different systems. 4,000 different copies, right? And so why you would need those 4,000 different copies? God knows, but somebody in the last 10, 20 years of, the, of your enterprise's sort of data history felt the need to go recreate the wheel because they had to go discover a new fact, discover a new insight. But as a consequence, you got sort of, again, the signal to noise problem, which is that information is hard to find, information is very hard to trust, and it's really hard to understand the information that you're looking at. And so, you know, what we, you know, what I'm going to submit to you is that there is a notion today, and you know, obviously you're going to be shocked, but, but what we do is we deliver a data catalog. 
And the idea behind a data catalog is that across all of these various information systems, across your databases, across your BI tools, across the APIs and all the microservices that you're producing that allows anybody to produce any type of code without any sort of documentation, without, without all, you know, with, all of the, with all the file systems that you might have, there's lots of information and value inside of the existing knowledge that you have and the existing systems you have within inside of your company. And most of the people inside of your company actually have no idea what's available and have no ability to access that information. And so what, what you know, Gartner has written somewhat eloquently about um, is to say, look, if you have a curated catalog, you're going to recognize probably twice the amount of value you have from the information inside of your enterprise as opposed to not having a catalog. And why that is is because you, you solve three basic problems. One, you make information easy to find. You make it easy to understand, and you make it easy to trust. Now, that seems like a pretty large claim, so let's just sort of dissect that. If you think about, and we'll take an analytics role, because they're obviously the people who consume data most actively in their jobs. But I would submit to you that almost every person in this room, and over time, almost every person inside of the enterprise is going to consume data in some way, shape, or form. So if you think about kind of the data in the life of an analyst, whose job it is basically to understand data, um, often you would talk to analytical folks and they would say that it takes me three to six weeks just to find the data itself. I have a question. I don't know which data set to go use. I have to call up Jane. I have to call up John. We have a customer at Safeway Albertsons where they had a project where they had to commit in 96 hours to getting a web campaign out. And only through elation were they able to find the data set. And the only way they were able to do that is because they were able to discover that a data set was owned by somebody in Texas and they were able to find that person in Texas to be able to discover the data set that they needed. Now, it's often the case that you don't have that 96 hours, and if you don't find that data set, what you end up doing is just not answering the question in the first place. But once you've found the data, you've got to go understand it. What does it mean to understand data? Well, is this the right data set that I'm using? What do these tables and these columns mean? Where did this information come from? How was it generated? Who else has used it? Has anybody else asked this question before? Right? These are all questions that effectively, if you could understand and if you could do well, might abbreviate the project altogether. But often, you just don't know what you don't know, and so you go reinvent the wheel one more time, creating data set number 4001. Right? Uh, and then finally, finding the data set and understanding the data sets are two things, but then you have to be able to sort of trust the data. Is this actually the correct thing? How do I know? And so often folks, many of you in this room, have been in data governance meetings where you talk about people and process and technology and certified data sets. And these projects go on for years. And you don't necessarily know what happens to be correct or what's good. Right? And so in this analytical process, if you could abbreviate that time by touching and understanding the data and discovering the data, you could actually learn more and learn much more quickly. Right? And we know this to be true, because if you think about the world of before Google and after Google, or before Yelp or after Yelp, you used to be able to go to a Yellow Pages, and you used to be able to then not necessarily find the business you're looking for. You now go to Google, and you say, oh my god, I can find exactly what I need, and I can ask tons of questions, and I can do that iteratively to get to what I need to do much more quickly. Um, and so, Basically, you know, if you need, you know, uh, what I would submit to you is if you have an information discovery problem inside of your company, and I would argue that most of the companies of some scale in this room have that problem. If you have a data analytics team that basically says it's going to take too long to find the data, that few people in my company know how to use the data or know how to understand how to even ask the questions of the data, or that nobody in my institution actually trusts the data, those are sort of good indications that you might need a data catalog. Um, so just some background on us. We obviously do provide a data catalog. Lots of different people use us. A uh, variety of companies uh, in a variety of different industries, ranging from pharmaceuticals to financial services, over to retail, software development, use us also in Europe and Asia. Um, so we'd love to talk to you. We have a booth outside uh, and appreciate your time. Thank you very much.